You know, as women age, they are met with an overwhelming truth. They start to realize that sooner or later, they won't be able to receive the same attention and validation that they did when they were in their 20s. They won't be able to have children. Giving birth will get harder, and they'll need to find a partner, settle down, and start a family right away. Typically, women in their mid to late 30s are affected by this. The majority of women are not prepared for the wall, which is another name for the forthcoming era when the biological clock starts to slow down and finally comes to a standstill. These women are also aware that no matter how much success they pursue, they would always feel empty inside because they could never climb the corporate ladder without forgoing or delaying having children and settling down with a nice man. For more than 20 years, many women in their early 30s have been successful in attracting men's attention. Males as young as their early 20s and even as elderly as their 50s and 60s have and will continue to have the urge to date women in their prime. Young women have received the attention they have always desired from men of all ages and social backgrounds who have shown them love and given them validation for free. A lot of women have told me stories about how when they were in their mid-twenties, dodgy 50-year-old guys would hit on them. And when they turned 25, high school boys would try to get them to go on dates with them. There was a certain imbalance of the men's ages who usually pursued these women. In this sense, the world is open to us men, but not to women. This is because women reach the pinnacle of their lives in their 20s, and after that, their value begins to fall. Men, however, reach their peak after their 30s and their value continues to rise until their 50s. When they are in their 20s, most women can easily catch the attention of men of any age. But beyond the age of 30 to 35, when their appearance begins to deteriorate, the interest of teenagers, 20-somethings, and even men of their own age starts to fade as they start to focus on younger women instead. Many women believe that the men in their age groups don't treat them fairly. Women who are 35 years old question why guys their age don't want to date and marry them. In actuality, a 35-year-old man with a job, resources, and a car can seduce younger, more attractive women in their 20s. Before becoming engaged and eventually getting married, most men need to spend a year or two getting to know a woman. Because of this, if a man marries a 35-year-old woman after undergoing this process, she won't give birth until she's 38, thus decreasing her chances of having children. Early to mid-30s, women must start thinking about males in their late 30s, 40s, and possibly even 50s as potential partners. Many of these older men are now the only ones left on the market because they have already had children and marriages. If these men are divorced, they likely already have children, and they might want a second wife. Some of the mid-30s women I know don't seem to want to accept this. They claim that only older men are looking at them, and they find it repulsive. These same ladies spent their 20s hopping from one fling to another, and now they're confused about what happened. They didn't anticipate finding themselves in this situation, and things weren't supposed to turn out this way. Many of them find it shocking that men select women rather than women selecting men. It's challenging for women to accept that they aren't being pursued in the same way they once were since the natural order of relationships has been turned in favor of males. Only a small percentage of guys who have been physically burned by women have an understanding of the plight of women in their 30s are now the men they choose to date instead of the entire male side of the human race. It's even worse for women who have an obsession with having babies. They don't care how they can get one because they want a child so desperately. They will sleep around unprotected and claim to be taking the pill when they are not. I met a man who had three children in three years with three separate women, all of whom claimed to be taking the pill. He is currently supporting two children and residing with the lady who gave birth to his third child. I used to believe that once their friends started having babies, a lot of ladies my age would start having children as well, especially in the group of individuals I hang out with. Many of my female friends who are in partnerships and are in their mid-30s have decided against having children at all. A lot of the ladies in groups of 10 to 15 who hang out together 
choose not to have children. The few women who had children are no longer allowed into this particular social circle since these 35-year-old women are still partying and clubbing as they did in their 20s. I find it disgusting that women go to cougar clubs to meet young men looking to get in bed with old and bored women. The fact that the majority of these 25-year-old men are simply concerned with getting laid seriously damages the self-esteem of many women. They don't appear to care, though. They crave the attention of young, attractive guys, so they want to extend the party a little bit longer before they approach middle age. Women often mature earlier than men do when they are teenagers because they have historically had the reproductive advantage when it comes to passing on their genes. This is because, especially at times in our history when resources were scarce, the earlier women mature, the higher the prospects are for the survival of our species. They will, however, wither earlier as well because they flower earlier. Men with money and resources are more likely to attract women, and smart men who put out the effort and save money will only become more alluring to women over time. Women in their prime go to clubs in order to live off of the attention and validation they receive from men of all sizes and ages. Young girls who frequent clubs are real crowd pullers too. They raise the level of that club and enable more ticket sales, along with the sales of drinks inside. Since everybody wants to go to clubs that are frequented by young and beautiful girls in their prime, the brand equity of those clubs increases exponentially. With regards to Megtow, I've said this before as well. Clubs are more like zoos where everybody flocks to see the pretty birds or the majestic tigers, and the zoo owners do everything they possibly can to give them more visibility. Clubbing isn't what it used to be. Now it's about a bunch of thirsty men who are incredibly low value, simping after average girls who are only looking for the validation they're addicted to. And in all of this, the owners of the clubs make profits and entire generations get wasted on alcohol and waste away their resources on meaningless things trying to chase the wrong man and woman. Men, on the other hand, are drawn to women because of their capacity for reproduction. The aging process can be compared to a game of poker full of deception and other types of misdirection where both sides are involved. For example, if a man and a woman were playing poker in their early 20s, the man starts with one chip and the woman has 90, but by the time they are 35, he has 85 of those chips and she has only 6. Your financial resources have a significant impact on your status and alternatives in real life, just like in poker. More women than men that I am aware of wasted their money rather than saved it when they were young. They would go on trips, purchase shoes, have supper out a couple of times a week, and hang out a lot with their pals. When they are in their mid-thirties, they would also spend a lot of money on makeup and cab fare. I've come across women who are deeply indebted from credit card debt and student loans and are searching for a wealthy man to bail them out. Numerous ladies I know have openly admitted to me that they are looking for a sugar daddy to assist them in paying off their debts. For women, the aging wall can be a huge psychological blow. Men age considerably more slowly than women do, and once they are in their mid to late 30s, they are more willing to date a variety of 20-something women. In my opinion, women's reality begins to sink in around the age of 30. They party their way through their 20s, pursuing the bad guys, the highs, the tattoos, and the clubs, while subsisting entirely on the unrestricted affirmation and attention they receive from hungry males. Reality sets in when they are in their 30s. They are no longer the object of lust at nightclubs from guys. They can't obtain the complimentary affirmation they formerly did. The men who used to hang out with them at parties are now settled and leading fulfilling lives with their spouses. These ladies discover that society has changed while they are still thinking like they are in their 20s. They also begin to understand that their biological clock is about to expire, which sends them into a panic and prompts them to look for a guy anxiously the same polite and responsible person they laughed at in their 20s. The same person who is now a millionaire and lives contentedly with his young bride while also taking pleasure in life. Attention and validation play a huge role in women's lives. Well, they play a huge role in men's lives as well. The only difference is 
women are the ones who always expect and receive it, while men are always the ones to give it to them. Men have realized that finding a good woman is like looking for a needle in a haystack. They have realized that women are hypergamous, hypocritical, and cannot be trusted in long-term commitment. They have realized the juice is not worth the squeeze. Thanks for watching Man Reacts. Show us your love and support by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. And let us know your thoughts on this in the comments. We're always up for a healthy debate and discussion.